Welcome to this uh, special press conference about the Bene League. I'm really happy that you're attending us and you're watching this for half an hour, about half an hour. And after the show, you exactly know what is going to happen with the Bene League and the future of this league with a new name and a new logo. I'm going to talk about it with a couple of stakeholders, really important stakeholders. Welcome, gentlemen, all of you. Uh, Wim van Keren, General Manager Pro Basketball League, welcome uh, to you as well. Uh, Ramses Braakman, he's uh, President of the Dutch Basketball League. And of course, uh, Bob van Oosterhout, he's a sport marketeer, triple double, and owner of Heroes Den Bos. Um, Wim, if I can start with you, maybe with the idea of the Bene League and what's happening with the league. Uh, I mean, I think we started talking to uh, to each other 2018 uh, yes. in, uh, in Breda. Yes. So uh, obviously the Bene League had been an up and down uh, idea over the, the past uh, years, but we really started talking seriously. And uh, I think once we both saw the opportunities, it didn't take too long to uh, to, to actually go a step further and, uh, and really in, in depth uh, in the concept. And why was the idea appealing to you? Uh, I think it's about growth, uh, the opportunities, growth for uh, for basketball in both countries. And that's where it starts with uh, um, for the league, but for the clubs, more more importantly, uh, I would even say so uh, um, growth. I mean, that's that's a basic that's a basic idea. And Bob, talk to me about the opportunities you see as a sport market in one hand and the other hand, you're a stakeholder as well as an owner of uh, Heroes Den Bos. Yes, I think the opportunities are huge, both in a commercial way as in a sportive way. Eh? We're going to be a much more interesting league for young players that will stay longer in our league or come to our league sooner. But on the other hand, there's going to be a lot of potential in media, a lot of potential with regard to sponsors that we're going to try to bring in. So it's a huge opportunity. So you have the opportunity, you have the idea, so you've got a sort of a feeling and then you need a process in order to see where you can go from Bene League to what's going to happen next. Exactly. So, Ramses, tell us a bit about that process you're going into from 2018. Yeah, I want to add one more thing, and that's the fan. Uh, of course, we want to deliver more excitement to the fans, and that's exactly where it's all about. We talk about sponsors, we talk about exciting games, but it's all for the fans. And, and that's very important. We want to involve more fans, more engagement. So that's, I think, one of the most important things uh, we, we have done this. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes, about the, the, the process. Um, what people sometimes think, okay, you're going to try this for a year. No, we're going to do this for the, the next 20 or 30 years. We're here to stay. You're confident. We, yeah, we have a, a long-term commitment to each other, uh, to the clubs, but also to make it a success. So will it be successful from the start? Or oh, we probably hope so, but uh, uh, definitely in three or four or five years, we have to grow it, we have to build it up. So another word, growth, Wim told us, uh, yes, so the process is starting now, starting in September, but then from there on, we're gonna learn together, working together and build up something great and something people really like. So when it starts, Wim, does it mean that the uh, two competitions are going to be together from the start or how does it work? Um, well, we basically merge into one competition, uh, so uh, so that is clear. But both um, countries start in their own country. So from September uh, through January, we're going to play regular domestic games, and then uh, between February and of April, we're going to split uh, the standings, top five, bottom five, uh, in both countries, bring them together, and in those months, we only play cross-country games. Uh, so only uh, Belgium uh, teams against Dutch teams. After that, uh, six teams qualify for the uh, um, national playoffs uh, in both countries. And the clubs that don't qualify, they start immediately uh, a Bene uh, playoff in which they uh, play against the clubs that are disqualified from the national playoffs. Was it an idea for you as well as, as, a, as a club owner, Bob, uh, where you thought, yeah, I think, we, I, I think I like that. I think it's appealing to me as well as a club owner. Yes, definitely, because we... Um, uh, we talk to each other as clubs and uh, we realized that our leagues, both the Belgium as the, as the Dutch league, were getting a little bit predictable. Huh? People were talking about uh, a solid top four and in Belgium it was about the same. And then we were supported by an agency, Hypercube. They did a really good job in helping us. Uh, it's a business innovation company that helped us with the structure, the governance, uh, the economic side of a combined league. And they told us that if you would mix the Belgium and the Dutch league, that uh, the league was gonna be much more, much less predictable. 
so more intense and intense games. And that is, as Ramza said, uh, of course, very important to the fans. Mm. And, and do you see that, that it's commercially interesting as well? Because sportively, yes, for the fans, yes. And you said commercially as well. Maybe Wim or Ramza is maybe you, one of you two. But do you see that sponsors are gaining interest in what you're yeah, doing here? Since together? the uh, announcement in December, we all, we, uh, we all said, okay, we're going to do this. The clubs were involved and they said, yes, we need this league. We understand. From that point on and even before that, uh, we noticed a lot of interest from, from media, much more than we had before, from commercial parties who are interested in what's going to be the process, what's going to be the, you know, the, the league itself, uh, how many events you have, uh, can we step in it? Um, so, yeah, that, that was from the start, but uh, we're still busy with the commercial propositions, with the media tender, and it's a little bit uh, too early now to announce some things, but uh, today we're going to announce something there. else. The potential, yeah, the is, potential there. is definitely there. And what yes. about the FIBA? Did the FIBA say anything to your plans? Then FIBA from the start immediately said um, that they backed the plans uh, because they obviously um, um, well, support the <laughs> development in both countries, but they saw the need for both countries to merge. Uh, the only thing that they wanted us to have was a, a national champion uh, since it, it's important to... Uh, for uh, European qualifiers and stuff like that, European competitions. So, li like Bob said, uh, the, 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 the competition format uh, um, safeguards uh, that FIBA principle. And um, every game matters. Uh, the, the, the fact that we uh, split the standings uh, enables us to have a good competitive balance all through the season. Um, every club only plays one time in his own gym against every club, which in both countries right now is not the case uh, sometimes. So, I mean, I think we, uh, we ticked a lot of boxes, but the most important one for FIBA, definitely. Is there in any case, any of you, a COVID delay because of the COVID uh, last period? Is there any delay in the plans because of COVID? Well, <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's a big challenge, uh, but, uh, but uh, no, no delay. I think, uh, the, no. if, I, if I may, I think the most important delay maybe was the decision. Uh, the decision yes, exactly. in, in December, yeah. Yeah. which makes that we, we've we've had to move fast. Uh, we've had to move fast, and and uh, we we the, the initial plan was more towards October. Um, I, I I can't say that commercially or media wise we we feel COVID as an um, as as a, as an, uh, an obstacle right now. I can't. I can't no, and I think it's a very concerned. it's you know it's it is a statement that all the clubs. Uh, despite of COVID, Absolutely. Um, uh, really wanted to go through with the whole process and, and that we almost unan unanimously choose for the Bena League. So uh, that, I think that's a very cool statement. The Bena League, that's the name now. Um, and you need a new name and you need a new logo. Before we're going to show your new name and your new logo, uh, take us on the story of the campaign, what you have been doing and how you came up with the name. Bob, maybe? Yeah, well, the thing is, we have been uh, working together really closely as clubs and the leagues and the, 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 the two associations. And we realized, all of us, that we need to approach a new audience. Uh, we need to uh, capture young people. That was very, very, very important. Uh, Generation Z, that is known to be very enthusiastic about basketball. So uh, we thought that it was not our thing as clubs or or uh, 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 board members of the leagues uh, to determine what the name is or what the logo is, et cetera, et cetera. So we wrote out a contest and over 1,100 people from Holland and Belgium um, uh, shared their thoughts of a name with Which us. Is, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. There was a lot, of, a lot of enthusiasm and 1,100 is a lot actually. And we have been checking them and there was one name that we used as the foundation of what we're going to show the inspiration. Uh, everybody in a, that yep. was our inspiration, yes. Okay, so uh, let's have this moment. The new name, the new logo of the Bene League. And while I'm using the name Bene League, I realize this is the last time I'm going to use the name Bene League. And it's the last time you guys are going to use Bene League. Good luck with that one, because you've been using it quite a lot. <laughs> but this is the last time you'll be using that name, because this is... The new name, the new logo, a new future.
Be next. Do I say it correctly? Be next? Be next, be next league. league. Be next league. Be next league. Talk to me. Talk to me. Be next league. What's about the name? It's a call to action. It's a mindset. It's a new era. Be the next contender. Be the next talent. Be the next fan. Be the next sponsor. It's everything about the future. It's the next generation of basketball. It's ben Belgium, Netherlands, next. Together. BN. Be next. I like it. It's the Be Next League. Wim, be next. What appeals to you? Be next league. Uh, like I just said, it's about the future, most importantly. Um, to me, it, it already means um, uh, being as professional as, as possible. Uh, be, it, it's going to be, the, it remains a core business, uh, organizing, uh, organizing a league, making sure that events that we organize contribute to the goals we set of growing the sport, of uh, bringing it to more fans. Um, I think those are going to be two, uh, two strategic uh, axes for sure. And if you look uh, at the future of B-Next, uh, Bob, and the, the image of the, the name and of the B-Next League, what do you see? Yes, if, if it's okay, I want to add one more thing to what Ramses and Wim uh, said, because it also has something in it, the name B-Next, as uh, the next step up for young players. Like, uh, for instance, the Eredivisie uh, in, in Holland, the Eredivisie football. Um, uh, you see that this league will probably be a next step for a lot of young players. Players, so in every way, it is uh, let's say a name that refers Absolutely. to the future and all the next steps that we're gonna put together. Well, and when you look at the the, the the image as you asked, well, I think about young, I think about spectacular, I think about innovative. It's it's uh, it's gonna be a great uh, content platform with very spectacular dynamic basketball content, but it's also gonna be a league that will host the the facilitate the start of. New concept, new ideas, new, mm, well, yeah, new, new, new things that will grow uh, the coming years all together in Holland and Belgium. So that's really cool. A question for all of you. Yes. One year from now, B Next has been introduced, B Next League has been introduced. What do you see one year from now? What has happened? What do you see? Tell me, Ramses. One champ. <laughs> <laughs> two champs. From Belgium two. or Holland? Um, <laughs> Mm. 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 From the B next league, at least. <laughs> but two champs in, in the, their own countries as well. Uh, I think a lot of involvement, uh, I hope a lot of involvement of fans and sponsors and everybody involved in this process. Of course, we need a little bit of time to set it and uh, to make it worthwhile uh, for everybody. Uh, so that means also all the volunteers who, who are playing a role in our, our process, they, they must feel connected to the brand. And this is the start. It's very colorful. It's one of our main priorities, inclus inclusivity. So, so what you see is a colorful palette. And that's what the sport's about. It's dynamic, it's colorful, it's for everybody, uh, for everybody from young to old. And, uh, but the, the, the look and feel will be very much aimed at young people. And we, uh, you know, an, an evening basketball is, is for the whole family. And we want to we wanna connect with them. Yes. Okay. Wim, be next league in one year. Uh, to, for me, it's about uh, fulfilling the promise. I want to I really evaluate, have we fulfilled the promise that we are talking about, uh, also towards fans, towards partners. Um, we have a year to establish a foundation. And I think uh, I'll be satisfied looking back at that season if we have made a successful first step. And then, like Ramza said, build on that uh, towards the future. Bob van Oosterhout, be next league in one year. I would say a very strong, very loaded, very passionate basketball brand. Short, sweet, simple. That's, That's what it is. Be yeah. Next League. Thank you, guys. You're not the only one I'm going to talk with because there are more people I'm going to talk with about the Be Next League. Uh, different stakeholders as well. Uh, we'll make room for Thomas van der Spiegel. He's an ex-professional, entrepreneur, uh, and Europe uh, president. I'm going to talk about Martin Bostein, president of Hubo Limburg United. And I'm going to talk about uh, with Anouk Biesters. She's a member of the board of Youth United. Thank you again and good luck with Be Next League, guys. So we know the name, we've seen the logo. I'm going to talk to three other stakeholders in this game. Anouk Biesters, she's a member of the board of uh, 
Joost United. Uh, Thomas van den Spiegel, ex-professional, Real Madrid. He's played for and uh, he's entrepreneur. He's for ULIP president as well. And Maarten Bostein, president of Hugo Limburg United. Anouk, I would like to start with you um, because there's a new league, there's a new name, there's a new logo, everything is new. Um, were you really um, positive about the idea from the start? Well, we were fans from the beginning, but I mean, as a new organization, we had our own challenges and uh, difficulties. We had to build a new organization, not only a team roster, uh, but also financially, so everything around it. So maybe in the beginning, we were a little bit uh, less involved, but uh, like the Bena League concept, the B-Next League is bigger than us as a club. So um, yeah, we were a fan from the, from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. And what about you guys? Uh, let, let, let's start with me, you, uh, Thomas. Well, I was always very positive and optimistic about the chances of a Benelux League, a B Next League, I have to say right now. Yeah. Um, because the Belgian League and the Dutch League were always internationally considered tweeners, like right in between the b really big leagues like France, Italy, Germany, Spain, but bigger and better than a lot of the smaller leagues. And I think putting those together will make them uh, better leagues, bigger leagues, and make them come closer to the to the really big leagues. So we were always very, very enthusiastic about the idea. I mean, what, 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 for Marta, what was for you the most important reason to say yes to this idea? Well, I think it was a necessity for um, for our league. We were we had some challenges being uh, our competition formula was becoming boring. There was always the same 10, 11 teams. Uh, fans kind of got sick of us seeing playing the same teams over and over again. And um, yeah, and you, you look across the border and you see a competition with pretty much the same challenges. So I thought it was pretty obvious that we just would uh, join forces and make something bigger, something better. And uh, one plus one was... Uh, so do you three. guys see, because we've been talking about the commercial potential of the B Next League as well, but the sportive side of it, uh, what do you see in that? Because you see the other teams. So what do you think it will uh, make your competition grow? Yeah, I think it will become more attractive for uh, for import players, but also for domestic players to stay here and grow because it's more challenging. Uh, you, you'll get to play uh, other teams from other co from another country, like a new involvement. You get to challenge yourself with players from another country. So it's it's for sure going to be more as a drawing pool for uh, for other players and you, to retain your good domestic players. Do you think, Anouk, that will help uh, Joost as well in, in finding new players uh, in order to make them play in this league, in the B next league? Yeah, I think so uh, as well. Of course, it's a bigger competition, stronger opponents, and we are not there yet. But now we are in this league. Uh, I mean, we are not here just to be in the league, so we want to compete. And um, yeah, we will. So we have the same ambitions and uh, want to compete in the league. In your days, when you were a player, um, and you would have uh, had a B next league like we have now, is it something that would attract you to stay longer here in this region? Uh, that I don't know, but as a player, you always want to be challenged. You always want to play against better opponents, new opponents. And uh, as Martin just mentioned, uh, playing uh, the same teams over and over and over again, you get to know these opponents too well. It's not as exciting as a player no more. You lose a little bit of motivation uh, and you're not as challenged as any anymore. So I think that's a good thing as well, that, that you challenge these players as well. And of course, the league will become bigger. Uh, you will have all these different opponents, so it will be more attractive. And the goal should be, uh, and I think it was mentioned by one of the former speakers, but it, it should be also a stepping stone towards these big leagues. Uh, it will be very attractive for young potentials, both domestically, but also international players to play in the the B next league. What, what in your experience, and in your opinion, what you guys see is the biggest difference at the moment between that Belgium and that Dutch league from a sportive side of view? I think the, it's not because I'm a Belgian, but I think the Belgian league is a little bit more established, has, the level is a little bit better, it's not <laughs> as big. So I think it's a big challenge as well for the Dutch teams to, to reach that level already. Uh, within the next one or two seasons, because that that will, uh, of course, contribute to the attractiveness of the league and the competitiveness of the league. Um, but I think that's, but it's a minor difference, and I think it can be easily closed. Uh, but that's the that's the biggest difference today. Anouk, do you agree? Is the Dutch league um, slightly less than the Belgian league at the moment? I think I have to agree, and players agree. But like when there's a Benelux league. Um, like we also attract players uh, that wants to want to play in the Benelux League and a commercial side. The B next, the B next league. B next league. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I, the last time <laughs> I said the last time we're going to I use just, it, I but just, it's difficult. It's difficult. I just know the new name, so yeah. I have to get used to it. But um, 
uh, yes, and I think if uh, the Benex League will attract players for, for the competition and also the commercial side uh, will help our uh, clubs in, uh, in Holland grow. So, yeah. For Does sure. it have any impact on the organization of the game, uh, the Benex League, uh, League for you guys, for instance, uh, Limburg? I think on a, on, a, uh, on the level of rules, maybe like for instance, when it comes down to uh, homegrown players, there are some differences between countries. You also have some things that are just being organized by uh, by uh, legislation. So those things are something that we have to overcome within a few years. But I think yeah, the rules of basketball are the rules of basketball, and I think organization-wise for us, it'll be okay. I, um, I think the countries. Uh, are not that big if you um, throw them together. It's still smaller than uh, Germany or uh, or Italy. So those things, those practical issues that were raised before, like the distances between some clubs, I don't think that should be uh, any issue. Like we have to see the bigger picture and uh, and go for it. Looking at the bigger picture, imagine we're here again in five years' time, and the B Next League has been have different champions and it's on the roll. Um, you guys have won. Maybe a title. I hope so for you guys. How do you see that future within five years? What do you see? What is the vision and the image you have? Anouk, I start with you. Yeah, well, a Dutch champion, Joost United, I would say. No, but not only, not only that. Uh, I think um, what we're trying to do with all the clubs, not only in Belgium, but especially in Holland, make basketball like big and make it uh, seen on television and have more fans. So uh, not only the league, the competitiveness, but just uh, as a sport in our country, I would like to see that. Just Five years. And BNX League has to be has an important role in, to in achieving sports, that. Yeah, in, in sports, in, in Holland, yeah. Okay. What do you say? Well, I would love to see the BNX League as an established international league that is respected, that um, that is close to the bigger leagues and that has teams not only uh, getting better in the B Next League, but also playing an important role in Europe, in the European club competitions. That would be an achievement because that's a gap as well. That's a little bit too big today to really perform well at an international level. And I think the B Next League will contribute to closing that gap as well. You, so you think it, it will close gaps to maybe to biggest step to Bundesliga or, or, or Spain or whatever? Yeah, I think, I think the, the level of the league will increase. Uh, and will contribute to teams being able to perform also internationally. Okay. What about you, uh, Mark? Well, I absolutely agree with Thomas, but also we have to have the ambition to look even further and be more ambitious, and that's compete with other sports. I think uh, we should aim high and be the number one sport in our countries and, uh, and just uh, fight it out with, uh, with, with soccer and, uh, and cycling. That's a yes. quick, big ambition. Absolutely, why not? And you think B-Next League can help into achieving that ambition? Absolutely, I think basketball is an underrated sport in our countries. It's uh, super entertaining and we should have that ambition. Uh, why not? I think together we can absolutely achieve that. And uh, It's a sport that is just not known enough and I think it should be our goal to bring it to the bigger public and uh, yeah, compete with soccer. And do you feel that this B Next League will help to get in touch with the Generation Z, which you want to do, the younger generation, get them involved into the sport? Well, I think uh, the Generation Z is in contact with the sport today. Yeah? They can follow the NBA whenever they want, wherever they want today. And I think translating that into the local element of the B-Next League would be a great achievement. I think that there is potential right there, and it's just making that slight translation from the American model to the, to the local model that would, uh, would really be good. I would like to thank you, because I think uh, you've uh, said a lot, a lot about the B-Next League. I wish you luck. I wish you titles, I wish you inspiration, I wish you the growth you're looking for, and I hope you have a lot of information which you had, like, uh, what is it, 20, 25 minutes in this uh, press conference, the Be Next League. Uh, stay in touch, and I'm happy that you want to look at us and listen to all these great stakeholders from the Netherlands and Belgium. Thank you so much for watching, and see you soon.